Okay. All right. We're going to set this up. We're just going to let it run. And, uh, it's going to be starting soon. In five minutes. I'll just uh, point it this way for right now. So. Jenna. Hi, Jenna. Hey Lorenz, I'm gonna send you a, a um a paper that I wrote for a poem and stuff, and I'm gonna need to read it off your phone. Okay? Let me uh, figure out how to get out of this thing again. Come on. Back on, Julie. Can you see it? Yeah. 
last night is big. Yeah, it, it doesn't like that tan.
please fill up the seats up front. Thank you. Just waiting for more few people to come. I saw some cars. Thank you, Lawrence. Deacon. Can I hold this? Again, good afternoon. Welcome everyone to Girly Celebration of Life. I'm Elva Del Rosario and one of the many friends of Girly who are here today. Um, so, so we can find comfort from each other. The sudden loss of our beloved Girly, loving wife, mother, friend, and mentor. Someone said that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Gurley was the person who always made people loved, welcome, and valued. She was willing to step up for people in need. Let us all remember and celebrate Gurley's life today, and we will now start with a prayer service. Led by Deacon Curry. Uh, please have your paper. Uh, we will sing Amazing Grace all together. Please stand up. Yeah. 
the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of God the Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And your spirit. My brothers and sisters, we believe that all the ties of friendship and the affection which knit us as one throughout our lives do not unravel with death. Confident that God always remembers the good we have done and forgives our sins, let us pray and ask God to gather Maria to himself. O oh God, glory of believers and life of the just. By the death and the resurrection of your Son, we are redeemed. Have mercy on the servant Maria Therese, Teresa Moore and make her worthy to share the joys of paradise. For she believed in the resurrection of the dead. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the first reading. building from God, a dwelling not made with hands, eternal in heaven. So we are always courageous, although we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Yet we are courageous and we would rather leave the body and go home to the Lord. Therefore, we aspire to please him, whether we are at home or away. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive recompense according to what he did in the body, whether good or evil. The word of the Lord. The responsorial song. The response is, the Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord, the Lord is, is my, my light, light and my salvation. salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom should I be afraid? The, the Lord, Lord is my life and my salvation. One thing I ask of the Lord, this I seek, to dwell in the Lord's house all the days of my life. The, the Lord, Lord is my light and my salvation. To gaze on the Lord's beauty, to visit his temple, for God will hide me in his shelter in a time of trouble. He will conceal me in the cover of his tent and set me high upon a rock. The Lord, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Even now, my head is held high above my enemies on every side. I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and chant praise to the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Hear my voice, Lord, when I call. Have mercy on me and answer me. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Stand. The Lord be 
with you. And with your spirit. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Gird your loins and light your lamps and be like servants who await their master's return from a wedding, ready to open immediately when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds vigilant on his arrival. Amen. I say to you, he will gird himself and have them recline at table and proceed to wait on them. And should he come in the second or third watch and find them prepared this way, blessed are those servants. Be sure of this. If the master of the house had known the hour when the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be prepared for at an hour you do not expect the Son of Man will come. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> May be seen. On the paper here it says, Breathe humbly. A reflection on the person's life. But it's more than that. This vigil, the vigil that's usually done before the person is transferred to the church for the funeral, is a time for family and friends to be together and to hear the word of God. And that word, which we just heard, both in the first reading, the Psalms, and then the gospel reading, reflects not as much on the life of the person that has gone before us, Maria Gurley, but on what we are called to do with the rest of our life, too. Gurley, I was told, was a wonderful cook. Yes. And she loved to have people over, and she was a welcoming hostess. And this is what we're called to be. Welcoming hostess to the people not only dear to us, not only close to us, but those people that are in need of us. By being present to them. For in each person we should see Jesus Christ. And that's about this knocking on the door. Be ready. Jesus Christ is in our lives. He may come at that first calling, and if he finds you prepared, he will have you seated at the table. He will gird himself and prepare the meal. He will serve you. This is what we get in Mass, the Holy Eucharist, our nourishment, the center of our faith. But if he comes on the second calling, or the third time we are prepared, well, he will do the same for us. He does the same for us over and over and over again. His sacrifice is one time, but he nourishes us all the time, both with the word and with the sacraments. And Maria, Early rejoiced in that nourishment. She rejoiced in knowing the Lord, as we should all rejoice in the same. So, the main thing of a ritual is not to be downhearted. After we finish our prayers, we will hear a few eulogies about the life of Gurley. And this is supposed to be an uplifting time in which we support each other. But remember in prayer, remember in our hearts the individual she was, and rejoice 
that God has brought her into our lives. Rejoice that she is with God and the Son, hopefully cooking for them and waiting on them and rejoicing with them in life everlasting. At this time, we'll do the prayer of the intercessions. Listen, Lord, pattern of our life forever. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Promise and image of what we shall be. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Son of God, who came to destroy sin and death, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Word of God, who delivered us from the fear of death, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Crucified Lord, forsaken in death, raised in glory, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, gentle shepherd, who bring rest to our souls. Give peace to Maria forever. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you please those who mourn and are in pain. Bless Maria's family and friends who gathered around her, her today. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Together, let us pray for the coming kingdom that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord God, you are attentive to the voice of our pleading. Let us find in your Son comfort in our sadness, certainty in our doubt, courage to live through the hour. Make our faith strong through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are those who have died in the Lord. Let them rest for their labors, for their good deeds. Go with them. Eternal rest grant unto Maria Teresa more, O Lord. And let her her perpetual life shine upon her. her. May, May she, she rest, rest in peace. peace. Amen. Amen. May the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep our hearts and minds and knowledge of love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God bless you all in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
Thank you, Justin, for that wonderful rendition. You know, we we're not going to forget, really. I just want to share this black that is hanging on our wall with sense. When we count our many blessings, it makes it hard to see. It's life's most valued treasure. Are the treasures that are free? For it isn't what we own or buy that signifies our wealth. It's the special gift that we have for Christ, our family, friends, and health. I want to call Neff to start with the age. We are honoring, celebrating, and remembering a woman of great example to our small community of Filipinos here in the United States. Our friend, our second mom, to most of us, Tita for some, and even grandma for our kids. Our beloved Maria Teresa S. Moore, for the most of us, I am Metherine Land V. Alsalda, one of the lucky Pinay who got to know her when I came to the United States. Living away from home, we always feel sometimes the emotions of being alone and sad, especially on times of special occasions like Christmas, New Year, Thanksgiving Day, July 4th, birthdays, and lots of other occasions wherein people and family gathered together. But with Tita Gurley's presence in our life, we never felt alone. On these special occasions, she always made sure that nobody among her friends or among the Filipino community has to spend their holidays alone. She always made sure that we celebrated each occasion with lots of laughters with her family's company, and with other Filipinos' company. She loved to cook, and we are always well fed with her tasty foods. As she is always a lang run with cooking on these special occasions from early morning till the party is over. And not only that we are full during the party, but she also made everybody brought home leftovers after the party as she already prepared all the containers for food takeouts. She was very generous and kind to everybody. She treated each one of us equally like her own daughters and sons. And I can still hear her voice always calling us Iha. And this generosity of hers did not end on special holidays only. For some of us, especially her neighbors here in Jacksonville, Tita Gurley also invited us not only on special occasions at home, but sometimes even with no special occasions at all, just for bonding or simply eating or talking. She was always full of energy, glow, and laughters. She was so concerned about everybody around her, took really good care of her husband, James, and her sons, and mom, whom we also call mommy. And we are so lucky to be included as part of her extended family. During our kids' birthdays, with or without celebrations, she always made sure that she gives them give kids gifts. She was always so excited and happy to know about their school accomplishments and awards. And she even loved to tease them who already has boyfriend or girlfriends. Sadly, she won't be there no more to witness Justine's, Guanet's, Jam, Jairus, Janea, Ania, R.A., Aaron, and other kids, especially her kids, Jim and Lawrence Future. She won't be meeting her grandkids with them. 
Lawrence, your mom loves you so much. <laughs> you are so lucky to have for us, mother. When our hearts are not at peace, we will just call Tita Gurley no matter what time. And you can chat with her for hours till you feel better. I will always remember the late night chat. The in between work messages, the weekend chats in FDL phone, and most importantly, the cooking Tita Gurley in front of her kitchen stove whenever we enter her kitchen. She always welcomes us with warm hugs and a smile. And we always love to enter the back door because we always know that she is there cooking in front of that the stove in the kitchen. Yes, this is our favorite place because we know that's her favorite place too preparing a sumptuous meal for all of us as we go to her home. Just thinking that this won't happen again makes my heart really so sad. I have lots of memories about her, and I can only mention a few of them, or else I'll be talking here forever. When she was the president of SIPA's Filipino Association, ladies in Jacksonville loved her so much that even if we, both our legs are not coordinated, and our hips can't wiggle. We tried so hard on that winter month, each night, to practice for our intermission dance number for that Christmas, SIPA's Christmas party. And though, I, I kinda asked myself, what have I done to myself that night after how fa I saw the video of how funny I moved on those dance videos, I never regretted it. Because we had lots of laughters and the preparations and time we spent together made us closer as a Filipino family. For sure, her fellow, fellow officers from SIPA's Filipino Association will terribly miss her. She is one of the kindest, gentlest, most understanding, and so calm person and a leader I've known. Our wedding last May was supposed to just be really simple celebration. It started with just initial plan of simple gathering at home with our closest friends. But my Filipino friends with the leadership of Tita Gurley reached out and helped us a lot. They planned for lots of Filipino foods to cook. And Tita Gurley tirelessly cooked and planned the Filipino menu for our wedding. I can still remember them saying, we want your visitors to enjoy the foods in your wedding. And she was right, because my co-workers and most visitors were more excited with Filipino foods rather than the food served by the local caterers. People didn't even touch the American food served by the caterers, but enjoyed the foods prepared by Tita Gurley. She even teased me saying, I did that because I like your husband. You have a good taste, she said. <laughs> He's handsome and really kind as she was giving me her naughty, choking smile. After the wedding, friends even at work started to request for every now and then foods from the kitchen of Tita Gurley, even without a special occasion. My co-workers in the hospital or in the nursing home usually would ask, Ned, can you bring that egg roll or pancit again? So every now and then, I will order foods from her just to appease my American co-workers. Nobody can really beat her talent in cooking. Tita, as I'm standing here talking about you, I'm wondering who can prepare those food again for all of us like you did for us. Our Filipino parties will never be the same again. We already miss your recipes and we ran out of stocks already for our kids' favorite snacks from your famous Filipino shop out. Sadly, we never imagined that you will leave us so early that we didn't try to learn cooking your recipe. We thought you will spoil us with your presence forever. My last encounter with her that I can remember was when we brought her to the emergency room following her not being able to breathe. 
upon declaration that the decision that something is wrong with her heart, she told me that I and Ate Irene are her angels that day for saving her from having heart attack. Little did I know that it's the other way around. For now, she is already our angel, up above, looking and smiling at us. Tita, I know you're already happy and feeling perfect wherever you are. You don't feel weak no more, or you don't feel labored breathing already. You don't have to tell me to massage your cramping right feet and legs like you requested me to do on that night in the emergency room. You don't have to struggle to walk three steps or go up and down the stairs without feeling unstable or falling. You don't have to complain feeling bloated and heavy from swelling. You're already in heaven and we will always miss you also dearly. And your memory will never be forgotten. Thank you for everything, Tita, for the strength and advices and for being a mom to all of us here and grand grandma to all our kids. Our gatherings will never be the same without you. And your memory will remain in each one of us here. We love you. Thank you. To be honest, I had no idea I was doing the evil cheat until I woke up this morning. So uh, I don't really have too much to say, but I will say some things about her. Um, above all else, I'd like to do nothing more but to thank her for everything. She, like like Neth said, she took care of us really well. And without her, everything was just infinitely more difficult. Um, her cooking, of course, was above all else. <laughs> Her heart was so big, you know, and they say that the best cooking comes from the people with the biggest hearts. And her heart was so big. And you can taste it in her cooking. Um, I'd just like to thank her for, like I said, everything that she's ever done for us. She would always put on these, these parties for CPAS. And even back when we lived in Louisiana before moving up here, she would put on parties for FAST, which is the organization that was the, the Filipino organization in Louisiana. And she spent so much time just, you know, carefully planning out dishes, just decorations, events, dances, everything. Everything that you, you grew to know about her, she spent so much time just thinking about you all. Uh, above all else, I'd like to thank her for what I believe to be my, my greatest gift from her, which is my name, which funnily enough is misspelled on the program. I, I don't know if you guys if spell checked on it or if you guys forgot I had a Z in my name, but I'd like to thank her the most for that. Um, if my dad was the one to name me, I, I would have been another James. I would have been either the, the junior or third. I honestly can't tell. There's so many of them running around. But I'd like to thank her for that. Um, my name, is, I'm sorry. My name is um, derived from my grandfather's name, which was Lauro. Um, I never met him. Um, he died before I was born. He died before my brother was born, so I, I never really got a chance to know him. Um, but um, the day after my mother passed, we had to tell my grandmother the news, and it was one of the most heart-wrenching things I've ever had to experience in my life. Uh, but the, when we did tell her, I don't know if it was by chance or if it was something divine, but a picture of my grandfather fell from the wall. And I just like to think that, you know, it was, it was her just telling us she's all right. <laughs> You know, she was in a lot of pain um, the last few years before she passed. She had diabetes, neuropathy, heart problems. Her swelling was just horrendous. Her stomach was hard to the touch. And you know, these, these last few years were very difficult, seeing me not fulfilling my life or seeing my brother struggle. And it's, it's you know, I, I'd like to think she's happy. 
she, at least she's no longer in pain, is the only solace I really have from this entire, you know, this entire thing. My favorite memory with her was just spending time with her, either when it was cooking or going out to eat or anything, just anything food related. It was when we best bonded with each other, learned about each other, and talked our feelings out. For any of you who still have your mothers here, I just want to say, get to know your mother. Please, just talk to them as much as you can. Just understand how they feel, because one day they'll be ripped from you and you'll never get that opportunity. That's all I really have to say. Um, our last conversation, she really wanted us to go to Savannah, Georgia for whatever reason. And this is mostly my plea to my dad, not really to any of you guys, but I'd like to go there just to honor her. Um, it was rough. I, and I'd like to thank you, Dad, just most of all for everything. You had to spend the most amount of time with her in the emergency room in ICU because we had to take care of Lola and take care of my brother. And I think above all else, she, she misses you the most. She wants you to know that she's happy, whatever she is. Thank you. Is so intelligent. I mean, she, they called, she used to have a nickname, and I don't know if everybody knows this or not, but they used to call her the walking encyclopedia because she just knew every word. Um, she pretty much taught me how to speak English. I mean, she, <laughs> she was beautiful inside and out. Um, her, <laughs> She was so giving that she actually donated her body parts, you know, when she died. She just wanted to help others as much as possible. She she was one of the most understanding people I've ever met. When I decided to get out of the military, that was pretty hard on us. But she you know, she supported me 100%, you know. Um, I took a job paying less, you know. I thought that I was gonna be able to get out of the military very easily, make more money, but it was hard at first. You know, it took me a while, you know. She um, decided to go get a job and help the family. Um, and she eventually started making a lot more money than me, which was great, it helped us out a lot. <clears throat> you know, her making a lot more money kicked in my drive to be able to try to help help the family more. So I started studying and I was able to achieve more of my life. And it was all because of her. You know, looking at her, how she could rise above and be able to help the family when really she didn't I mean, you know, I we always felt very that you know, wives should be home with the family all the time. But she helped out a lot. You know. She showed a lot of courage. Uh, you know, even through the hardest times, um, when I finally was able to make enough money, I was gave her the choice to stay home, and she did, and she was able to help other people with that time, be able to spend more time helping families and helping the, the community. Um, and, you know, she deserved it, 100%. Um, you know, but they, everybody talks about her cooking. Yeah, she was, she was the best cook. Um, I don't think anybody denies that. Um, she'll never be replaced. But she would want me to be happy and keep on living. After the surgery, um, the open heart surgery, we came. She came back to us for a day. 
and she was joking and we had a good time. And that night, I'm sorry. Well, that that night after the surgery, um, the next day she came back to us and she was joking and we had a good time. And that was my son's, my oldest son's birthday the next day. So we decided. She said, "Take your boys out and have a good time." So we went out and we had a good time. You know the. The last thing she said to me, she said, you know, um, take care of my boys. You know, I, I, every time I le left Gurley, I always said, I love you. And she said, I love you back. And we always kissed. And that was her last time. Her last words to me was, I love you. <laughs> so I, we, uh, we had a good time. Um, and um, I spent the night at the house and after spending about a week and a half in the hospital with her. When I got back, um, she turned divorce. She never came back down. She had had coded a day after that, and they brought her back, but she never came back. <clears throat> Three days later, that was it. And that's that's all for that. I'm gonna say a poem. <clears throat> Gurley was a queen bee, as beautiful as a butterfly, so smart and funny, I don't deny. As good as a person can be, no one would disagree. Her elegance and grace would leave you amazed. Her patience was beyond belief. She is my angel sitting at God's feet. In my heart, she will always be. I will always forever miss and love you. My girl, my best friend forever. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. Um, Deacon Carey, can we ask you to bless our food? And I would like to um, make, make you aware on your right. There, these are her precious moments collections, and we are auctioning them. So it's a silent auction. Please bid on them, and if you want to donate, just put it there. Okay. Uh, Deacon Kerry, please bless our food. Let us pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Bless us, O Lord, with these thy gifts which we are about to receive from thy bounty, through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
show you the food. All right, Louisiana, you're going to have to step it up a notch. This is pretty good. I can't believe how many people showed up. It's just amazing. Hi. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. <clears throat> Let me see the food here. Oh, wow, that's a lot of food. Look at that. Looks good, too. Hey, Jen. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna end this, and when we go do the rest of it, I'll turn it back on. And thank you.